Here's a delightful little problem that connects algebra with number theory. We want to show that if you take any integer, raise it to the seventh power, subtract the original number, the result will always be divisible by 42. And when I say any integer, I really mean any. Positive numbers, negative numbers, even zero. Now, 42 might seem like a random number to pop up here, but there's beautiful structure hiding beneath the surface. Let's dig in and see what makes this tick. The key insight is to think about what 42 really is. Rather than wrestling with this number directly, we can break it apart and tackle each piece separately. The number 42 breaks down into 2 times 3 times 7. Now here's the beautiful thing. If we can show our expression is divisible by 2 and by 3 and by 7 separately, then it must be divisible by their product. This works because these prime factors don't share any common factors with each other. This lemma is doing the heavy lifting for us. When two numbers have no factors in common and they both divide some expression, then their product divides that expression too. Now, let's get our hands dirty with some algebra. The best way to understand this expression is to factor it completely and see what structure emerges. Starting with n to the seventh power minus n. Right away, we can see that n appears in both terms, so let's factor it out. This gives us n times the quantity n to the sixth minus one. Now, n to the sixth minus one might look intimidating, but it's actually a difference of squares in disguise. Think of it as n cubed, all squared, minus one squared. The difference of squares pattern tells us that a squared minus b squared factors as a minus b times a plus b. So our expression becomes n times n cubed minus one times n cubed plus one. Beautiful. Now we've got a difference of cubes and a sum of cubes staring at us. Both of these have their own factoring patterns. For difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed factors as a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. And for sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed factors as a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. When we apply these formulas, we get this beautifully expanded form, but look closely. Do you see something special? We have n, n minus one, and n plus one hiding in there. Let me rearrange this to highlight what's really going on. Those three terms are the key to everything. There we have it, the complete factorization. This structure is going to unlock everything we need. Now that we've factored everything, Let's tackle divisibility by 2 and 3. The beautiful thing is we can handle both at once. Focus on this first part, n minus 1 times n times n plus 1. This is the product of three consecutive integers. Here's a fundamental fact. If you take any three numbers in a row, one of them must be divisible by 3, and at least one must be even. Think about it this way. When you divide by 3, you can only get remainders of 0, 1, or 2. Three consecutive numbers will hit all these possibilities, so exactly one gives remainder zero. For divisibility by two, let's think about this carefully. If n is even, we're done. We already have our factor of two. If n is odd, then both n minus one and n plus one are even. Actually, since they're two apart, we get at least a factor of four, but we only need a factor of two, so we're golden. So this product of three consecutive integers is always divisible by both two and three, which means it's divisible by six. One piece of our puzzle is complete. Now for the final piece, divisibility by seven. For this one, I want to step back to our original expression because there's an elegant theorem that applies directly. We need to show that n to the seventh minus n is always a multiple of seven. Enter Fermat's little theorem, one of the gems of number theory. The beautiful thing about this theorem is it works for any integer, whether or not it shares factors with our prime. The theorem says that if you take any integer a, raise it to a prime power p, it's congruent to a modulo p. It doesn't matter if the prime divides a or not, this always works. In our situation, the prime p is seven, and our integer a is just n. Let's plug these in. So Forma's theorem tells us that n to the seventh is congruent to n modulo seven. 
Congruence just means they have the same remainder when divided by 7. If we subtract n from both sides, something nice happens. We get n to the 7th minus n is congruent to 0 modulo 7. And that's exactly what we wanted. It means 7 always divides our expression. So there we have it. 7 always divides n to the 7th minus n for any integer n. Forma's theorem delivered this result with elegant directness. Time to bring all the pieces together. We've shown that n to the 7th minus n is divisible by 2, 3, and 7. So we know that both 6 and 7 divide our expression. The key insight is that 6 and 7 share no common factors. They're what we call co-prime. You can verify this with the Euclidean algorithm, or just notice that consecutive integers never share factors. Since 6 and 7 both divide our expression, and they don't share any factors, their product 42 must divide it too. And that completes our proof. Proofs are beautiful, but I always like to test things out with real numbers to build intuition. Let's start with n equals 0. 0 to any power minus 0 is just 0. And 0 is divisible by everything. Check. For n equals 1, we get 1 to the 7th minus 1, which is just 1 minus 1 equals 0. Again, divisible by 42. For n equals 2, we get 2 to the 7th, which is 128. Minus 2 gives 126. And indeed, 126 equals 42 times 3. For n equals 7, we can factor out 7 right away. 7 to the 6th power is a big number. 117,649, so 7 to the 6th minus 1 is 117,648. If we divide this by 6, we get exactly 19,608. So 6 definitely divides 7 to the 6th minus 1. So 7 to the 7th minus, 7 equals 7 times 6 times 19,608, which is exactly 42 times 19,608. Let's try a negative number. For n equals negative 1, we get negative 1 to the 7th, which is negative 1, minus negative 1, which gives us 0. The pattern holds for negative numbers, too. Before we wrap up, I want to share something beautiful. This result is part of a much larger pattern in mathematics. The general principle is this n to the k minus n is divisible by a prime p whenever p minus 1 divides k minus 1. It all comes back to Forma's little theorem. Here's the idea. If p minus 1 divides k minus 1, then k has the form m times p minus 1 plus 1. Forma's theorem then guarantees that n to the k is congruent to n modulo p. In our case with k equals 7, we look for primes p, where p minus 1 divides 6. If d is a divisor of 6, then p equals d plus 1 gives us such a prime. The divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Adding 1 to each gives us 2, 3, 4, and 7. Since 4 isn't prime, we're left with 2, 3, and 7. And their product is exactly 42. Thanks for joining me on this Mathematical Journey Factorial. If you enjoyed exploring the beautiful structure behind this divisibility result, consider liking this video and subscribing for more mathematical adventures.